for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So something that we may think very minute, something very serious to the Lord. Now, thank you for the opportunity uh, in coming uh, before you and bringing the message. Not that any of you had a choice. I guess other than coming, I do thank you. I do want to give thanks to our Lord God for his love for mankind and his plan for salvation. I want to give thanks to Jesus Christ for his love for mankind and fulfilling that plan. And I want to give thanks for the Holy Spirit who is guiding me here this morning. And I thank him. Be careful. Very vague. You probably was wondering, doesn't say much about the, the message. You're wondering what, what is it going to be about. And so with the topic, I thought, well, I'm going to do a little test. So I approached a friend of mine, said, I'm going to say two words, and you tell me what comes to your mind. I, sa I said, be careful. He's like, well, what are you worried about? There was no meaning behind be careful. There was no gist for it, no cause for it. So I thought, okay. An idea came into my, high, makes, into my mind, makes sense. So I found another friend, a different situation. This friend was happen, happening to be making coffee. And I just randomly said, be careful. And again, a puzzled look on her face. I'm not sure what for dangers there are in making coffee, but she said, what about? So again, the thought came to mind. There has to be a cause for the warning. And being careful is just that. It's a warning that danger or trouble lies ahead. It's just telling you to be cautious. Okay? So point one in this message. Are we aware of any and all dangers that exist. So this morning's reading will be in Ephesians. If you would like to turn there. Ephesians chapter 4. And I'm going to start in a unique place at the end of chapter 4 because in chapter 5 it starts out, therefore, at least in my version, in which I will be reading from the New American Standard. So whenever you have a verse that starts out with therefore, see then, whereas, wherefore, you've got to go to the verse before in order to get it in its correct contents. So that's why we're starting off in chapter 4, 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Chapter 5. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. But immorality and any impurity or greed must not be given to even be named among you as is proper among saints. And there must be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know with certainty that no immoral or impure person or covetous man who is an adulterer has an inheritance in heaven in the kingdom of Christ and God. Verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, 
but instead even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of these things done which are done by them in secrets. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason it says, Awake, sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Verse 15, Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not drink, do not get drunk with wine, for this is dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs speaking and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to, the Lord, to God, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Let's go before our Lord. Dear Father, we just thank you for the reading of your word. Lord, we just ask that you open up our minds and our hearts. And Lord, help me to speak with clarity and may nothing protrude out of my mouth that is not from you. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank, you, thank that we are able to partake of it. And may it nourish our souls. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. So verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander and malice be put away. 31, he starts, he's telling us of things that we are not to be that we are to put, put off, to do away with. With the exception of wrath and anger, these are also things that God is not even. And only God has that ability of wrath and anger. If you would like to, I've got some scriptures uh, to turn to. Romans 12, 18. You can jot them down, read them later. If you want to turn with me now, that's fine, or just listen. Romans 12, 18. If possible... As far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. 19. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Not us, but the Lord will repay. Verse 20. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him, give him a drink. For in doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. It is not our job to bring wrath upon an individual or peoples. It is only the Lord God, for he only he is just and righteous enough to do what is right. We have no business with anger and wrath. Then 32, he switches, switches it on us. It tells us what we should be. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted. Now, how easy is that? A lot of times we are tender-hearted with a complete stranger, but brutal with those who we are near and dear to. And why is that? We can never seem to understand why that is. We can be so loving to someone we know nothing of. Yet the ones that are closest to us, we treat them horribly at times. Should not be. But we should be tender-hearted with everyone. Forgiving each other, just as God and Christ has also forgiven you. The Lord's Prayer. Pastor Roger just preached on it here not too long ago. Let's say it again. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I missed the most important part. I missed the whole point of that whole thing. Oh, Terry. Matthew 6, verse 12. 
Let me read it, being that I don't know it. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Sorry about that, folks. But forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do you understand what we're saying when we say that? We are asking God to give us that same forgiveness that we are giving others. Do you understand the seriousness of that? If there is anyone here that is holding a grudge, having trouble forgiving someone, this should shake you to your core. If you cannot forgive someone having trouble, how serious is that? But we are needing to forgive each other, just as Christ has forgiven us. We gave him no reason to forgive us. He shouldn't have forgiven us. But he did it out of love and mercy. Same thing with us. We should not be holding grudge. It is not good. Chapter 5 goes on in stating, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love, just as Christ also loved you. We are not to be looking to our neighbor to the left or to the right, but we should be looking to Jesus Christ as to be in that example. Because what happens if we look to our neighbors, then we find reason to feel good about ourselves. But when we're looking at Jesus Christ as that example, we see all the area, areas in which we need to improve. But walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. A fragrant aroma. Jesus Christ's sacrifice it smelt good to God. It finally did what the blood of bulls and goats could not do. It was pleasing to God. I'll never forget the first Sunday we came to visit Brant's. I knew I was at home. When we got out of the car, the aroma. <laughs> I was set. I'm good. And Becky even commented, I bet you like that. <laughs> but yet it's the same way with God. God did not find the aroma pleasing with the blood of bulls and goats. But when Jesus was sacrificed, it was pleasing. This is what we need. Isaiah 10, I'm sorry, Isaiah 53, verse 10. But the Lord was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief. If he would render himself as a guilt offering, he will see his offspring, and he will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand. Verse 11. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied by his knowledge and righteousness and the righteous one, my servant, will justify the many as he will bear their iniquities. Jesus finally did what nothing else could do, and it pleased the Lord. That breaks my heart, that it pleased God to crush his own son. And for who? For me. For you. All of mankind. Jesus Christ did that. Verse 3. But immorality and any impurity or greed must not be even named among you as is proper among saints. Now don't let get hung up on the word saints. That does not mean you're perfect. Saints just means that you're set aside. Yes, if you are a blood-bought child of the living God, sitting here this morning, you are a saint. Does not mean you're perfect. 
This means that you're set aside. Set aside for what? Set aside for God. Therefore, that means we must live differently as well. We should not have any part of immorality and impurity. Verse 4 is a hard one, because I am greatly guilty of it. And there must be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. Matthew chapter 12 talks about this very thing. Matthew chapter 12, starting at verse 35. The good man brings out of his good treasure that is good, and the evil man brings out his evil treasure, which is evil. 36. But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall be given accounting for in the day of judgment. 37. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. I got a lot to answer for. I like to joke around and have fun just as much as anybody else. But has everything that's come out of my mouth been pleasing to God? Absolutely not. In which I am ashamed of. So something that we may think very minute is something very serious to the Lord. But for by your word you will be justified. What does that mean? It means that if you have accepted Jesus Christ, that you have confessed the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, those words makes you justified. Talks about that in 1 Timothy chapter 6, 12, if you want to look that up later. Be careful what we say. Verse 5. For this you know for certainty, that no immor immoral or impure person or covetous man who is an adulterer has an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Don't be part of the world. Don't live with one foot in the world and what's one foot in the kingdom of God? It doesn't work that way. Verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these, the wrath of God has come upon the sons of disobedience. Are you a son and daughter of obedience or disobedience? The Lord makes it very clear here what we are to be doing and how we should be living. Are we living it? Therefore, do not be partakers with them, for you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Be careful not to fall into snares. Be misguided. Point number two, are you aware of the dangers, but just don't care? Do you know what the dangers are, but you just, I don't care. I'm just going to do what I want to do. I love the story of the Titanic, not the tragic part, but I love the details of how it was built. the night of the Titanic, they received seven iceberg warnings. Seven iceberg warnings. And they were completely ignored. It was reported that the captain chose to ignore the warnings, and there is no doubt that arrogance and pride played a part in the tragic accident. They figured that if if there was an iceberg out there to sink the Titanic, they would see it soon enough. It was a pitch black, dark night. There was no moon. The only lights that they had was off of the Titanic itself. 
to the time in which they saw the iceberg, it was too late. But they figured a ship of that magnitude, there was no need for the warning. It did not pertain to them. Seven times. 1,503 people died needlessly because of carelessness. What a tragic. Therefore, do not be partakers of them. For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness. Verse 10. Trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Are we trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord? Do we care what is pleasing to the Lord? I hope so. Then I would question, well, why are you here this morning? If the things of the Lord do not matter, why are we here? Verse 11, do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead expose them. Verse 12, for it is disgraceful even to speak of these things which are done by them in spirit and secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. It is so important for us to be children of light because we are also exposing the darkness. Without us in the world, the world does not know what the darkness is. With the Bible and us living it, we expose darkness. Why do you think the world does not like Christianity? Why do you think the world does not like the Bible? Because we are supposed to point out those things that are wrong. Are we? Are we in our living? Verse 14, For this reason it says, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as, as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. I used to think that I am my best person when I am sleeping. Well, after reading that, I found out that I wasn't. Because doing nothing is just as bad as doing something that's bad. I'm not being active. I'm not being an advocate for the Lord when I'm got my eyes closed. Yes, we are to rest. But yes, we are to be active as well. Awake, sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. See, we're making, supposed to be making the most of our time. Why? We'll all admit to it that the days are getting worse and worse and worse. And the time is getting closer, without a doubt. So we have a lot of work to do. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Are you happy, joyful when you go through the day, or are you a grump? I get myself in trouble a lot because at 4.30 in the morning, I can be the most chippiest, chippers person that you ever see, and you think, however can he be? It's a curse. <laughs> that is scriptural, too. I can't tell you where it's at, but it is in there. But from the moment my feet hit the ground, I'm ready. And I'm just as cheerful as lunchtime. I know that's not for everybody. But do you have the joy of the Lord? Maybe not at first, but at least you should be getting going here. 
We need to be that example, bringing joy to all the world. Making melody in our hearts, just as we just sung. Always giving thanks for all things. This isn't easy. We tend to pick and choose what we're thankful for. Are we thankful for the hard times as well? Not usually. But it says to be thankful for all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to God, even Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Be careful with what we do. We'd like to read a story. I'm going to read it because I don't know this one in detail. In May, in late May 1889, a strong storm system produced about 6 to 10 inches of rain within a 24-hour period throughout the Allegheny Mountains, causing rivers throughout the area to expand to near capacity. Warnings were sent to the nearby towns several times in the morning of May 31st, alerting people about the situation with the dam. At about 3.10 in the afternoon, the 72 feet high, 931 feet wide, South Fork Dam ultimately failed, releasing about 20 million tons of water. I did not misread that. 20 million tons, not gallons. 20 million tons of water down the valley. In previous years, many alarms had been sounded regarding the imminent failure of the dam. Under the misguided belief that this final alarm was just another false alarm, many people in Johnstown did not seek higher ground. By the time the flood water reached Johnstown, it was no longer just water, but rather it included much of the debris from the 14-mile-long valley between the South Fork Dam and Johnstown. The, the debris flow was reportedly up to half a mile wide and may have been as tall as 40 feet above ground in places. There was no safe refuge in town, and the incident laid claim to the deaths of more than 2,200 people. And the cause damaged $17 million dollars Warnings were given throughout the years that the dam was unsafe and unwise advances were taken to repair and recondition it. A story similar to the Titanic. Not taking heed to the warnings. So careless. Again, the loss of life. Treated so haphazardly. How are we in our living? You know, I think a lot of times when we're on a road in the summertime, we travel roads much differently than we do in the wintertime. In the summertime, roads are clear. 81, you could probably do 90 mile an hour. You're not going to do 90 mile an hour when there's sleet, snow. At least I hope you don't. But when the situation is there, we need to pay attention and heed to those warnings. We need to be careful. Not with just our physical life, but how are we, how are we treating our spiritual life? Are we living for the Lord? Are we doing the things that is pleasing to Him, or are we doing the things that are pleasing to Terry Zimmerman? Am I living for me? And the thing of it is, we are in that day and age where it's all about me, 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 me. And it needs to be about Jesus Christ. It needs to be about Jesus Christ. I thought fitting to read this in closing. If you want to join with me, it's uh, Second Peter. Because it talks about the end days. 
Are we prepared? It is getting closer and closer, my friends. Second Peter chapter 3, starting at verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be burned up. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Verse 12, looking for and hasting the coming of the day of the Lord. Are we looking forward to him coming? Are we watching? I know I, know I am. <laughs> Lord, come quickly. But, how many lives will be lost? How many souls will perish with him coming today? Hmm. But according to his promise, we are looking for the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness dwells. Verse 14, Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. He's, he's tarrying because he does not want anyone to perish. He loves everyone, even the most vilest sinner. He loves them, does not want anyone to go to hell. So his patience for mankind is, his salva is our salvation. Just also as our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you, as also in all the, his letters, speaking in them, of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and the uns unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the Scriptures. Are you taking the Scriptures and turning them all around, making them to fit you? Wrong. That's why we need to take the Scriptures and read them, read them in context, make sure that we understand them in their own destruction. Verse 17, You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall from their own steadfastness, but grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. I would suggest that you evaluate your living. Only you can speak for you. And only Terry can speak for Terry. If you're not sure, take it to the Lord. His Spirit will convict you, will prick you. If you know for a fact that you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, now is the day. Now is the time. Come. Come. Before it is too late. He can come at any moment. He can come at any moment. He can come in the next minute. Don't be a tragedy. A needless tragedy. Let's go before the Lord. <clears throat> Dear Father and God in heaven, I do thank you for this moment. Thank you for delaying and coming. Even though it would be such joy to be with you. But Lord, there are so many, so many that are lost, so many that would perish. Lord, help us to be obedient. Help us to be your children, to be children of light.
Lord, if there is anyone here that does not know you, I pray for their souls. I pray for that soul that's nearest to hell. And Lord, for those that are your children, I pray for us that we may strengthen our walk. To not be deceived, to not be misguided, to not live for ourselves. Lord, I thank you and praise you for who you are, for what you've done, and will continue to do. Lord, it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you.